and record as well so that we can make sure for the people who can't make it, we'll go through everything. All right, so I'm going to take you through um, today the project template, which is the Excel document that you're gonna have to use to complete the final course project. So um, hopefully you've had a chance to look at that. If you haven't, I just wanna pull up and I will share um, my screen as well. So let me just change the view here. So I'm gonna share with you. <clears throat> So you should be able to see now my, um, my screen. So we're going to look at, within Blackboard, the key area here is course project documents. So uh, the first one that we're gonna walk through here is the project template. This is, this is the key to completing, again, everything that we need to do for the certificate of need final project. Um, takes us through all of the calculations. So, that's where I'm going to start, and I'm just gonna walk through kind of how this project template is structured. So let me just pop back over to, um, to my Excel document, I'll open that up. Okay, sorry, one second. All right, now I'm going to, so it takes me just a second here to uh, figure out how to share the right screen. Okay, we're gonna minimize that. And I'm going to open up our project template form. Whoops. Sorry about this. Okay, so sorry about trying to get everything up. So do you both see the project template now? Okay, so the way the project template is structured is again, there are a number of tabs along the bottom and each one of these tabs in this worksheet essentially corresponds to a, a particular type of analysis that you have to do in order to, to do the certificate of need process. So the first one is the primary service area. And even though it's coming up first in our project template, we're not gonna worry about that now. And that's actually in Blackboard, the content that you'll be going through this week. So um, don't worry about doing that now. Um, again, we'll focus on this over the course of the next uh, week or so in Blackboard. It's not uh, mission critical in terms of having the calculations build upon you know, one another, so you can come back to it towards the end. What we are gonna start with is the population tab. So this is really important in looking at your county, we want to know how the population is changing specifically from 2015 to 2020 because we're going to try to make a projection for how many beds we need to either add or take away um, over the course of the next couple of years. So we're going to look at this five-year um, change in population. So for the information that we need to fill out these tables, we're actually going to use the Cornell pad projections. The Cornell website has um, really great population projections. They're kind of the go-to for anybody doing this type of analysis. Um, so again, bear with me. I'm gonna just jump over to, um, to that screen to show you what that looks like. So again, this information is listed in the course project documents. Um, and I'm just going to hop right over to, again, my website. <laughs> So we're gonna to go to the Cornell pad projections. So when you go in the, um, in the course project documents, you'll see the link to get to the pad projections page. What you're gonna do is, you know, you'll come right to this page, which basically takes um, the age distribution. This is looking right now, I have selected 2015. So you're gonna look at 2015. This is for all of New York State. So it tells you exactly what the, um, the left-hand side here in blue is males, on the right-hand side in orange, females. That's going to tell you but essentially what the population distribution looks like, right? So when we get up to 85 and above, right, that, that's going to be, you know, our population values are going to be a little bit lower there. So this is, again, for New York State. What's going to be important for you to fill out this project template is you actually have to scroll down. And I'm going to, for the sake of just walking through this, um, do Onondaga County for Syracuse. So I will choose Onondaga County. Hi, Jeremy. Um, choose Onondaga County, 2015 is selected. And so now this, this gives us an idea of what the population trends look like by age cohort. And the information you need to fill out the project template is gonna be down here. 
So this is going to give you all of the, the population values. Again, this is 2015 for each one of these age cohorts. So you need to make sure that you look at, you know, males. I think one of the cohorts we're looking at is from um, zero, uh, we've got zero to four, five to nine. Another cohort that we use is um, in the project template is from 10 to 19, right? So you would just add these to the uh, total populations for males within these two age cohorts. Oh, whoops, that's 1990. So we would be going down this column for 2015. And this is the information that we would be using to give us our, our population in 2015. And then if we wanna look at the projections, the next column over is 2020. So that's gonna give us what our projections are for population for each one of these age cohorts. Again, comparing 2015 to 2020. So I'm gonna hop back over to our project template. So what you would see is you would use that information. So again, I'm using Onondaga County here as an example. We would just put in, use that information from the pad projections to do for here, 2015, county population by age and sex. So you take each one of these age cohorts and add up the information there for 2015 by male and female and the totals. And then we're gonna go through and do that, enter the same information for 2020. We'll calculate the rate of change by each one of those age cohorts, and then we're going to look at the distribution by age and sex. So this is important because as we look at our discharge rates moving forward, which is going to help us essentially calculate what our bed need is going to be in the final calculation for this, we're going to come back and we're going to be using this county population to understand if we know what our discharge rates are, our patient day rates, and we have some idea of what population is going to be by each age cohort, in 2020, that's gonna help us figure out what our bed need is going to be, okay? Does that sort of make sense so far? So the key information here is not to overwhelm you, just literally you use the pad projections information to fill out these tables. So this is where you'll wanna start when you start the project template is on this population page. So the next page I'm gonna um, hop over to is county utilization. So county utilization, this is another really key um, spreadsheet within this project template document. This is going to go through county resident discharges. Again, I'm using Onondaga County. So I'm gonna use that Sparks file that I had sent to everybody based on the county that you'll be using for your analysis. You'd be using that Sparks information to create a pivot table to fill out these tables. So I'm gonna walk you through that. Um, you know, once we have a chance to kind of walk through this template, we'll come back to this spreadsheet and I'll help you um, figure out how you would go about creating that pivot table to fill out this information. But basically what we wanna know is within our county, how many discharges did we see in 2015 by age cohort, by sex, and by each um, service area? Um, and then we'll look at discharge rates. And again, here we'll calculate those discharge rates using the population values that we had on the previous table on the previous spreadsheet. So it all, again, it, it, all, it all builds on one another um, to help us get to where we need to be for those final bed projections. And we're gonna do the same thing so we can go through and do patient days, um, the same uh, information by the county uh, that we're looking at for our analysis. And then we're gonna calculate that patient day rate based on the population from this, this previous, uh, the previous worksheet. Down here below, um, again, we'll be using our Sparks data to kind of understand our resident discharges by payer and service. So we've got each service here, and we've got all of the different payer codes. Again, we've got um, a label in our Sparks data set called REIMB, which stands for reimbursement. And this is coded by the state to tell us, you know, how essentially workers are being covered. Is it self-pay? Do they have workers' comp? Are they through Medicare or Medicaid? So this is gonna give us an indication of the population that we're dealing with and what, what kind of insurance coverage they have. This is gonna be important as we're filling out our certificate of need documentation. It's gonna tell us a little bit about um, our clientele and what sort of patients are, are using our system. We also have county resident market share by service. So here we'll go through all of the facilities that are located within our county and we'll basically be using our pivot table, our Sparks data to go through and say how many discharges do they have by each service. Um, we'll work on our county migration. Actually, I'm going to send you um, some information on the patients from your county. Because of the size of the Sparks data set I had to send, I had to cut it by county, by hospital county. So basically, if you've got, let's say, Manhattan County, you're gonna have all of the patients that received care in that county. 
but that doesn't necessarily tell you all of the residents of Manhattan, they're gonna receive care within Manhattan and within other counties as well. So I'm gonna to have to, for each one of the counties, I'll come back to you and get you information in terms of, um, as we're looking at my migration to see how many patients are receiving care um, within our county and how many are kind of leaving. I would say for most of you, you chose kind of more urban area, so we're probably gonna see a higher migration index, meaning we're gonna see patients from the surrounding counties come to receive care within our county. Um, we're gonna go through here, your county residents uh, day of admission by service. Um, so just giving, giving us an idea of what kind of trends we're seeing in terms of patient flow throughout the week. So again, this tab, this is the bulk of, of the content here. I would say if, if you wanna give yourself a goal, I would try to get through the population and county utilization tabs over the course of the next week. If you can do that, after I walk you through how to use the pivot table, you'll be in really good shape. Because once you get the hang of doing this, everything else will kind of fall into place. So once you get through this tab, and again, um, you know, I have a note up here that say, says this, these calculations must be done for all services in your hospital. Um, again, that's just, for most of you, I think you, you will have all four of these service areas. I don't think anybody chose a really small um, hospital. So all this, don't worry about that. All this means is we're, on this tab looking at all of the information to an analyze and understand utilization within your county. So just like we did on um, the last homework too, we're gonna go through and do some adjusted utilization statistics to see how that changes um, based on, again, our procedure for age adjustment using the standard population standard proportion. Um, so that's, those are all of the calculations on this sheet. The next tab is going to be facility utilization. So now, on the last tab for utilization, we were looking at the entire county. Now we're gonna look at utilization for just your facility. So we're basically gonna take that spark stat and we're just gonna look at your hospital. Again, we're gonna look at your discharges by payer and service. Uh, we're gonna look at your occupancy. So again, you know, when we were look, uh, looking to calculate occupancy, we're gonna take um, the total patient days and we're gonna divide it by the number of beds in our hospital for each one of these service areas. And all of that information is located on the SPARKS website, on the Department of Health website for each one of your hospitals, how many licensed beds they have for each one of those service areas. Um, so we take patient days and we divide it by beds times 365 days in a year, and that's gonna give us our occupancy for your hospital for each one of these service lines. This is one of the, the, the first key areas when you get to this spot this is gonna be the aha moment to say, all right, are we running really high? Are our occupancy levels you know, 85% and above? If they are, that means you're running high. You might need to be thinking about adding beds. We'll verify that with some of our further calculations, but this is kind of that first point where if, for many of you that are working in a, in a hospital, right, this, is, this should ring true to what you see on a daily basis. Do you see a service line, maybe PEDS, that if you're not a pediatric hospital, maybe your utilization is gonna be really, or your occupancy is gonna be really low here? This is where that should start to shake out and start to make sense in terms of all of the Department of Health data and what you see on a day-to-day -day basis. So at the bottom, again, we're going through and doing county residents use of just your facility. So again, we went through and did these um, calculations for the entire county, but now we're gonna focus on just getting this information in terms of how many discharges from your hospital broken out by sex and age cohort and broken out further by each service line. Okay, so I know I'm going through this kind of fast now, but I promise I'll come back and get into the data and do, use a pivot table to help you fill out one of these um, tables. Once we have all of that information, we're going to use um, the New York State uh, information in terms of the total discharges and patient days um, to help us understand how our county, in terms of our discharge rate and patient day rate that we calculated here, you'll see where to pull this information from. So from this table, your calculations in 4.1b, um, we're gonna pull in those for your county and we're gonna compare them to the state. And then we're gonna take whichever is lowest to help us use our create our, our bed need projections. And the reason that the state does this, if you're actually going through a certificate of need process, let's say your county discharge rate is, um, is relatively stable, it's comparable to what we see on, you know, across New York State, but let's say your, your patient day rate is a lot higher than what we see on average across New York State. 
the Department of Health is not going to be inclined to give you access or license you more beds um, just because your patient day rate is higher. That would be an indication that maybe you're not as efficient as you could be. And as a function of that, they would expect you to be at least at the rate of um, you know, the, the state average, if that makes sense, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna take whichever is lowest um, for the discharge rate and the patient day rate, either our county or New York State. And we're gonna put that over here in the right-hand column. This first table is just looking at medical surgical utilization. And then we're gonna go down and do the same thing for pediatrics, the same thing for obstetrics, and the same uh, thing for psych. So this is gonna give us an indication then of our discharge rate and our patient day rate which then we'll move into our, our discharge forecast. Um, so this is where we take, again, um, the estimated county resident discharges of your hospital for the year 2020. And the way we do this is we're gonna take um, that, in this case, we're looking at um, discharges. We're gonna take that discharge rate that we just calculated on the previous page, whichever one was lower, the states or the counties, and we're gonna multiply it by um, over here, by uh, the population, if I'm just gonna pop back, the population projection from the pad projections for 2020, we're gonna mu uh, multiply that discharge rate by that population that we're expecting to see in 2020, and that's gonna give us an idea of what we expect to see for our projected discharges in the year 2020, right? Kinda makes good rational sense. If we know our discharge rate, which is a function of a rate per thousand um, people, right, and we know if, our, if it's projected that the population is going to increase, that's going to give us some measure of trying to figure out just at how many um, additional discharges we can expect to see over the course of the next couple of years. So then we're going to just compare that to 2015 and see what the difference is. Um, I'm sorry, I scroll this up. So we've got our discharge rate up here, um, standard discharge rate, which we're pulling from the previous page, and then we're going to calculate our projected um, resident discharges for 2020. Again, by multiplying that discharge rate by the population that we'd already calculated. And then we'll do the same down here. We'll take the um, resident discharges of our hospital by using our market share that we've calculated previously. And then we're also going to, um, to calculate our hospital's change in resident discharges between the two years, between what we saw in 2015 and what we expect will happen in 2020. We're almost there. I know this seems like a lot, but I promise what I think I'm going to do is um, go back and I'll embed a lot of the calculations in here in the cells so that it's clear in terms of what information is coming from which previous tables. So you're not trying to figure this all out on your own. For right now, they're blank, but I'll go back and include that in there to help support you in figuring out which information comes from where. Everybody eventually gets through this project, so don't worry. Um, so again, what we're gonna use here in the very final calculations is we're gonna take that patient day rate that we calculated um, in our use rate template. So this patient day rate, we're gonna take the lowest, which, whichever is lowest, New York State or our county, that patient day rate. We also know what our projected county population is in 2020, and that's gonna tell us our expected patient days. So we're gonna get a total expected patient days for the year 2020. And then that is going to also give us an idea of um, what our county's med surge bed need is going to be at a county level. And um, then we're going to adjust that bed need for 85% occupancy. So uh, we're gonna adjust it because we don't wanna assume 100% occupancy. Um, so we adjust it for 85% occupancy. We also then take into account our migration index. If we know that we're getting more patients coming into our county from surrounding counties, we want to uh, account for that as well. So we would multiply that um, projection by our migration index. That's going to give us our migration adjusted bed need. And then we're just going to take, again, all these, these calculations so far have been with respect to our county that we're analyzing. Um, then all we do is we take our market share for our hospital and that would give us, if we know that we've got 25% market share and we know that the migration adjusted bed need in the county is 100 beds, right? Just for an easy example, if we know that our market share is 25% for medical surgical um, admissions within the county, then we know that we're gonna need 25 beds. We compare that to what we, you know, our existing licensed beds, and that's gonna tell us again whether or not we need to add beds or reduce beds. 
So I just flew through that. Um, but I'm just going to back up now and we can slowly go through how we uh, use the Sparks data in our pivot table to start filling out this county utilization table. So before we go on, I'm just going to unmute everybody and see, actually, I think everybody, oh yeah, I'll unmute everybody and see if you guys have any questions before we move on. So Leah, Jeremy, we've got Basil, and we've got Brian. Does anybody have questions? I know I went through that really quickly, but all of the calculations build upon one another. Um, again, I'll go back and I'll include, I'll embed some of these, um, the, the formulas into these cells so that you can, you can see which, which cells are pulling information from the previous tables. Before we move on, any questions about that? Not really. Nope. Okay. Okay, so again, you know, what we really want to see here is, is we want to get to this final calculation and we want to be able to compare, um, you know, the, the bed need that we are expecting for our hospital in 2020. We want to just compare it to whatever our existing licensed beds are. So again, if you're going to set a goal for yourself, I would certainly suggest that, uh, that you start, you know, by going through and filling out the population uh, sheet using the pad projections. And then you're going to want to get right into this um, into this county utilization uh, table. So let's go through and just I'll showcase how we can create a pivot table to be able to fill this out. So bear with me as I just switch over my screens. Okay, I'm going to minimize this and minimize this. I'm just pulling up now the Onondaga County um, Sparks file. So all of you who met with me earlier in the semester, um, you all should have your Sparks data set for your county. Uh, if you have questions about it, let me know. I'm just going to reshare here my screen. Okay, so now everybody should be seeing Onondaga County. Okay, so this is the data set, uh, the Sparks data set. Um, I sent in the announcement that I sent yesterday, I had attached all of the labels um, and what they mean. I'll walk through them really quickly just to pull out the, the key ones that you need. There are some extra ones in here. Um, sex is obviously, you know, we've got it categorized by male or female. We've got ethnicity and all of these values. Um, there's also a link in the course project documents that's, that takes you to, to the Department of Health Sparks data set. There are appendices that give you basically a, all of the values for how these are coded um, so that you know kind of what you're looking at with respect to um, all of the classifications. So there's an AMI flag, acute myocardial infarction, but for some reason this, didn't, this information didn't pull in. You don't need it for this anyways. Newborn, you're gonna see a value of one if this is uh, right here. So we've got um, some newborns, some babies that were born in the hospital during the year. You're gonna see those with a value of one. HSA is health service area. New York State categorizes basically regions um, for providing health services. It's not super important for this, but just interesting to know that, that New York State um, categorizes in that way. Service category. So this is really important. This is how we're going to differentiate medical, surgical, peds, obstetrics, and psych. Right? This is where we're, we're kind of breaking out those major service classifications. Uh, source one and two, these are payment um, classifications. You don't need to worry about these. This is an ED indicator um, to say whether or not patients came in through the ED, but I um, am not totally confident that all of this information is in there. We don't need it for this, um, this analysis anyways. We've got race. We've got patient state. So in most cases, you're going to see New York, um, but occasionally you'll get the, the, a patient from Pennsylvania or some other state that's receiving care at your facility. We got patient state, patient county. So all of these, um, each county is is coded um, on the the Sparks Department of Health data set. So know what the county code is for um, for your county. So if you look, this is the Onondaga um, Onondaga spreadsheet. So I'm fairly certain, and I should have looked it up beforehand, but I'm pretty sure that Onondaga is um, 31. So we'll we'll uh, classify or. or um, filter the information by a patient county 31 when we're doing our analysis. We've got admission hour, discharge hour, disposition, so where the patient is going after they're discharged, 
Um, reimbursement, this is the key reimbursement uh, column that you'll need to know what type of payer they have, um, whether they're Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross, so on and so forth. Patient age, um, the day of the week they were admitted, the day of the week they were discharged. We've got federal DRG in here, which we don't need, but for some of you, you are interested in doing some more specific, uh, specific analysis where that would be meaningful. We've got length of stay, um, zip code, five digit zip, which is the key to us being able to do this analysis. Most people, we're very fortunate, most people don't get all five um, digits. They try to um, add in some additional patient protections by only giving three digits, but it makes doing any sort of meaningful analysis pretty difficult. Um, so we've got the five digit zip code. PFI is permanent facility indicator. So every hospital in New York State and in the country has a number that's associated with it. So in addition to the name of the facility, there's also a number that's associated with it. Um, we've got some diagnosis codes, uh, diagnosis codes that we don't need to worry about. Um, the time or the date of admission, the date of discharge. Here's another interesting column. This is total charges everything that was charged for all of the care received during this patient's, right? Each row is, is a different patient visit. Um, so this was the total cost for this patient's stay. And you do need to add on, there are you know, two decimal places for um, the, the two cents there. So this would be, let's see, this patient's stay totaled $859,798, which is, um, which is, is huge, and it's, I'm actually looking at this, making sure that's right, is that correct? Um, that should be, these values look very large, but I'm just gonna come down here. Yep, nope, there's some, there's some normal ones as well. So let's see, if we look at this patient's, what is their total length of stay? Oh, that's why, yep, this patient was in the hospital for 241 days which meant that they had a hospital bill of $859,000. So again, we're, we're actually not gonna be using total charge for our analysis in this project, but it's also just great if you're looking for, if you're doing this analysis for your hospital where you work, it's fascinating to start looking at some of this charge data. So we've got patient city. So for each one of these patients, right, again, each, each row is a visit. This patient um, is from Syracuse. And the facility where they received care in this case is Upstate University Hospital at Community General. Okay, so that is the SPARCS data set. And what we need to do first and foremost is create a pivot table so we can start doing some analysis on this. So we're going to go over to insert and we're just gonna do pivot table. And you don't have to go through and select everything. It's automatically gonna pick up all of the information that's on that table. So we're gonna say, yes, that looks good and we want it create a new worksheet and that's going to pop us over here so now we have a blank pivot table and this includes in this pivot table this is the pivot table builder this is going to take all of that information that was on that previous worksheet and let us manipulate it to do our analysis so if you remember the first um the first uh, uh county resident um, or county utilization table that we wanted to fill out is looking at county resident discharges by age, sex, and service. So let's just go through, and I'm gonna show you how you would go about doing that. So we want to, in this case, use our pivot builder to understand how many discharges happen within our county. Um, and we wanna break those out by, we're gonna pull sex down into the column, so that's gonna break out male and female. We also wanna look at service category. So there's a lot of different ways you could do this. Um, I'm gonna put in service category as, let's do as a filter. And then we also know we wanna break out this information by age. I'm gonna pull age down into row. And the values that we want to throw in here um, to count, let's just see, we can throw in anything. Um, let's just say, we can throw, we should be able to throw this down in here. Okay, so we're just gonna throw any variable down in there. It's gonna count every time it sees um, anything happen in, um, in one of these, in, in this variable. So basically, once we have this information, so we can look over here on the left-hand side in our pivot table, and we can say, we wanna look first and foremost at, um, we wanna look at medical surgical discharges. So 
Medical surgical discharges here are listed as, as one and two. I think one is medical, two is, is surgical. So we're gonna say, let's just look at medical and surgical discharges. So if we select those two in the service category, this now makes sense, right? Because for patients that are 14 years and younger, it's actually interesting and you're gonna see some, some funky things happen with the, the data set. Um, but this is good, right? Because anybody under the age of 15 from zero to 14 would be considered um, a pediatric patient, right? They're not gonna be a medical surgical patient with the exception of maybe a few people who are classified med surg for various reasons. What we wanna know now is as we start to fill out that county utilization table, our first category is going to be for those, let's say um, from the age cohort, again, we were med surge, and we actually wanna put another filter on here to make sure that we are, oh, we, I'm sorry, we are looking at, we just have Onondaga County here, so we don't have to put an additional filter in. Now let's say we, we just wanna look at the ages from, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now this is going to give us our breakdown for that county utilization table. So we have all of the discharges that happened within Onondaga County in 2015. And we can see for this age cohort, we had 570 female discharges and 617 male discharges. Okay, so I'm gonna hop right back over to our um, to our project template. Okay, so if you were going through for your county and filling this out, again, we would have, um, we had 570 female discharges and we had 617 female discharges, All right? Obviously here we have our sum Add those two up. That's going to be our total discharges for Onondaga County for that age cohort. So once you get the um, once you get the discharges going and you you start filling out this um, this information, when you populate this first table, you've done a huge chunk of the work. I know it seems like there are a million um, different ca uh, calculations to go through in the project template, but just getting the hang of filling out this information, you're going to get pretty far. Um, and then of course, we're gonna calculate our discharge rate per 1,000 uh, by age, sex, and service. So we're gonna compare then this discharge rate. So if we know that um, there were 617 male discharges and we're gonna take that, and I don't, if I had this populated, I would calculate it, but we're gonna take our population, um, just looking at um, males 15 to 19, right? in 2015, we can take that information, whatever that population is, divide it by a thousand, and that's going to give us an indication of how many discharges happened per thousand people in Onondaga County in the year 2015. This is going to give us our discharge rates. So before I move on, any questions about how I calculated, how I used the pivot table to get this information? Can we see the pivot table again? Yeah. Can we pull it up? I'm sorry. Okay, do you see it? Yeah, so can I ask for value? You put in count of sex. So yeah. count of sex means discharges. Why did you not put in discharges there? So there's not actually, because of the way the Sparks data set is um, created, each row is essentially a visit. Right, so yes. each row is, is telling you that that is a, that is a patient discharge. Okay. So, so we actually just have, we can, in this case, we can pick any one of these fields and do a count of it. Now, if we wanna figure out patient days, that is a different approach. So if we wanna know patient days, which would be essentially the, the next couple of tables you have to fill out on that county utilization, let me show you how you do that because now we're gonna need length of stay. So we're gonna, um, actually I'm gonna throw this count of, sex back up in the field name. And we're gonna bring length of stay down. But if you look now, so that count is exactly the same because all it's doing is it's counting every time it sees a value in a length of stay column. So what we actually wanna do in this case is we wanna change this to sum of length of stay. Oh, okay, so this is actually good. So the reason this just, this just went to zeros is because um, it must be not listed as a number. 
So what you would have to do is actually go back to the raw data set and change everything in this field format cells as a number. And then let's see if that does the trick. Make sure it did it. Okay. And then we're going to have to go through and we're going to actually have to in our pivot table. Um, we'll need to refresh our data because we made a change in that original data set. So we'll refresh it and we should be able to go through. Okay, we've got common inputs there. Okay, it didn't change it to a number, but that's what you'll have to do. So I'll I'll go Can back. I, yeah. I apologize. For my research, if you go back to the other page, oh, yeah. we had to create a column oh, next yeah. to it. For some reason, for those of you who don't know, I do research with Dr. Bond, so I've worked with the Sparks data set before. You have to add zero, and then you can, um, if you just select the first one and then scroll down on the right with your bar. Yeah. Can you wait? So I don't have just, to scroll the whole way? Nope, you can apply to all. It's so much easier. And then use your bar because you'll go down so much faster. Okay, so, um, so I'm selecting this one. Yep. And then? Go to your bar on the far right, your yep. tab, yep, and drag it all the way down. Yep. Select, uh, what is it, the one where you select everything. Is it control, if I'm remembering correctly? Shift. Shift, I'm sorry. It's fine. Just go back up and do the same thing. Shift. Thank you. It's been a minute since I've done it. <laughs> no, I'm glad that you remember. I'm like, I know that there's yeah. a way to shift. And system. then you go to um, apply to all. So Which I, um, I want to say it's formulas or data. I'm so sorry. It's been a, a quick second. It's hard to do it without actually clicking also. Um, Okay. You could try control clicking on the column too. Yeah. There's such a simple way to do it. Um, to apply to all. Oh. I'll have to, can I open my Excel really quick? You guys can move on yeah. and I can do it. I'm so no, sorry. I so appreciate it because I've, run, I've run into this every year and then I forget yeah. that it's an issue until I try to go and calculate the patient days. Yes, there's um, just a super easy way to do it that I figured out because I had to do so many data sets. Oh, did I, did I, I think I just did it somehow and. Okay. Oh no, I didn't. I'm just, it's still. I'm sorry. Let me, I'll open, if you want to move on, I'll open my research really quick on my end and okay. so that way I can give it to everybody because it's so tedious to have to do it otherwise. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, as Leah was saying, all we have to do is we've got to switch this value and when we're looking at our pivot table builder, when we want to do patient days, total patient days, we're going to have to use that length of stay. And instead of just counting every time we have a value there, we're actually going to sum whatever the value is of that length of stay for each one of those patient discharges. And then that's going to give us the total patient days for all of the discharges within our county. All right. So if I I'm going to hop back over to our, um, to our project template. So, you know, we went, we went through the discharges here and then the county resident page, uh, patient days by age, sex, and service, that would be that column right underneath it where you'd be summing up those length of stay, the length of stay once it's um, switched over to uh, the number format. And then again, you'd compare that and do the patient day rate um, based on the population that you had now for, um, for each one of those cohorts from the, the Cornell pad projections. So let's go through to, and it's um, just working on figuring out the shortcut there. So your county resident discharges by payer and service. Um, so again, we could just hop back and now we are interested in um, really just looking at, we'll pull everything out of here. We just want to look at that reimbursement category. So if we go again, there should be, here we go, reimbursement. Um, we can just put that into the rows and then we can just, also pull it over here, account of every time it sees that um, reimbursement. That's gonna just 
give us a really easy breakdown for each one of the, the types of reimbursement um, or payers that a patient could possibly have. It's going to count, you know, exactly how many discharges you've had for Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross, and so on and so forth, self-pay. So that is also, um, that's also really important as you're going through and doing the certificate of need, um, the actual um, needs analysis in terms of understanding the needs of your population and how they're, how they're um, being reimbursed. Let's go and look at, um, so we could also look at if we did county resident market share by service. So we might want to look at all the different facilities that are located in, now again, I'm using Onondaga County. So I'm going to go through and let's just look at the, the pivot table um, for that. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, I didn't switch the screen over so you guys didn't see me do that. So again, I'll show you exactly what I did. So here um, is I was trying to look at the reimbursement, right? You just take reimbursement and put it down in the rows and then we could do count of reimbursement and that's gonna show you over here exactly you know, how, many, um, how many discharges were for each type of insured patient. So again, the next is we, we are interested in also looking at how many discharges by each um, hospital within our county. So let's just say that, let's put all the rows. So these are all of the different facility names for all of the different um, hospitals that we have in Onondaga County. So again, we could just go through here. This will do count a facility name. This is going to give you an overview of all of the discharges that happened um, in uh, 2015 by each each hospital okay so that's going to give you your total and that's also going to give you because we know we had a total of 78,000 discharges in Onondaga in County in 2015 um, that's going to tell us then what are you know for each one of these facilities in the um, project template we just go through and list each one of the hospital names and we would also want to break this out by service category. So let's say we can put another in the columns. We'll do um, service category. So this is going to tell us med surge. We can go back and we can select, I believe, um, I have to double check. I think obstetrics is four. Um, I think peds might be five and maybe psych is six. Um, so that's going to give you the breakout by service category for each one of the facilities. And that's also going to give you an indication of what your market share is for your county. Okay. So any other questions as we, because we kind of went through a number of the tables um, in the project template. I think that's going to give you... I don't want to go too far. You kind of have the, the overall flow of how the project template works. But again, I would focus on over the course of the next week or so, going through filling out the population tables and then getting started on doing the discharge and the patient day rates um, and trying to fill out all of the county utilization tables. And I'll work with Leah and try to figure out whatever that fixes to get the length of stay to easily just um, change the format over to a number and then you should be all set and have everything you need for that. I have it if, if you're... You have it. Oh, good. Awesome. Yeah. Let's see. It's edit, fill. So towards the top, like usually like on your laptop or whatever, there's edit controls at the top if you're using a Mac. Oops. Um, okay, hold on. Let me flip back over. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's still on there and this is still all hopefully... Okay, so it's edit, fill. Yep, fill and then you fill down. And it automatically does it for you so you don't have to drag and select. Because sometimes with, as you know, certain counties, your hundreds of thousands to have to scroll down with that button is, it takes like three minutes. <laughs> okay. So, for, sorry. For, can't see the screen. What was that? No, I said the screen was blocked. So I know, we, I'm so sorry. I was not seeing what you were doing. As I just went through that, okay, I'll undo that. So what she said is, um, as you go up here, so and there's, it's for, we're fortunate we've got kind of a blank column right next to length of stay DRG bill didn't didn't fill out. So again, you're in this case, you could just do equal this, and you could just do plus zero. That's going to create make a number, and then 
So you're going to scroll all the way down to the very bottom of that column. Do shift so that it's all highlighted. Then you'll go back up and go to edit, fill, down, and it's going to populate all of that. So let's go over to our pivot table. And again, if we make a change in the raw data, we have to make sure we come back over and we have to refresh our data. So if we do that, let me just see now if we can go through and we have the data now. We're going to keep, let's, um, let's have service category as a filter and we'll have um, sex as a column. And let's see, we have age, we'll pass it age by row, and then we can just do, we should have our counts over there. Okay, so this is gonna, again, give us all of our discharges, and if we're just looking at, let's say, we just wanna look at 15 through 19. Again, that's gonna give us, um, and we're just gonna look at, for comparison purposes, categories one and two. So this is where we had, um, for med surge, again, all of our male and female discharges for this age cohort. And if we now want to look at our patient days, we should be able to pull age out of there. We're going to go and we're going to look at length of stay. And I sure hope this works, right? So it's still count. So it's still going to just count every time that happens. But if we go in, it's, it's not count. length of stay. Remember, it's DRG. Oh, yes. Thank you. Mm. It is now DRG belt. Nice catch. Oops. I put two of them in there. Okay. So now that we have some of DRG bill, right, that's just, it's really just the number version of length of stay. That's going to give us our total patient days. So that's going to tell us for all of those discharges, right, the, you know, five and 600 discharges that we saw, um, this is actually how many days those patients stayed for those, for that service category. Thank you, Leah, for that, for getting that straightened out. Yeah, no problem. It's just a weird glitch. <laughs> so any, any other questions? So you have almost everything you need. The only other pieces that I wanted to um, touch on before we move on. So we do have one more document that, um, that I want to pull up. It's, uh, it's certainly not nearly as important as the project template because the project template is where we have all of these calculations. Um, but just so I can hit on it. Um, it is the, let me see if I have it here. Oh, um, so the community needs assessment document. I'm going to pull up, um, one from a previous student so you can get a feel for what this looks like. Okay, so now does everybody see this Word document here? Yes. Okay, so um, so this is the other piece. Once you've gone through and have done all of the calculations in the project template, this is the actual community. If you were to go through and do a certificate of need assessment for your facility to try to figure out if you, if you wanna get some more licensed beds from the state, you would have to actually go through and fill out a template in a form that is pretty much exactly the same as this. Um, and it's going to take information from all of those calculations that, that we just went through. So the first piece of it is demographic and health utilization profile. So you want a quantitative description of the population. Um, and this is the part of the descriptive epidemiology characteristics of trying to understand the person part of it. And so this is going to be a lot of the population data. So what I want to see from you is um, basically like you would do in a discussion post, go through discuss all of the data, discuss the trends, discuss if it's different or surprising than maybe other counties in the state. Um, the second section is going to be um, information that describes the population's use of a hospital. So this is going to come from our um, county utilization tabs. Um, so again, what I'm looking for here is I wanna see that you're able to describe after going through all the calculations what you're seeing um, within your county in terms of that, the, the utilization for services. And the last piece, actually not the last piece, um, community need. 
Um, so this is going to go through your service area analysis, which is the first spreadsheet in our project template. Um, in terms of which zip codes are you seeing the most uh, admissions from, um, how does that influence how you should be thinking about your marketing strategies, and if you want to have a, a bigger, um, a bigger, I guess, uh, presence in a specific community, right? Is we're seeing that a lot of a lot of care is transitioning to an outpatient setting, right? This might be um, an opportunity if you're not going to add beds for you to have more of an outpatient presence with um, specific zip codes as well. And then we're going to go through and do utiliz uh, utilization stats for your hospital in particular. Right, so going through, and again, I want to see that you're able to using these um, tables within your project template to describe what's happening and what utilization for services at your hospital looks like. Um, and then the very last piece is for each of the main service categories. And um, she didn't do this right, so don't use this as an example. But um, what you would, I would want to see here is the, the current capacity in terms of the number of beds. And then based on your calculations, how many beds would you suggest either adding or removing and for what new capacity? So if you, again, were actually going through a certificate of need process, you would have all of this information. You'd have the raw Sparks data. You would have all of your project template calculations. And you'd have this supporting documentation as well to basically make your argument. Um, the last piece of it is your oral presentation. Um, I'd like to see data visualization because again, if you were actually gonna go through and do this, you would have to make some sort of presentation to your board of directors and getting them um, all on the same page uh, in, in agreement with whatever the new capacity should be. So what I would expect to see is, I don't wanna see you cut and paste some of the tables and just put them right into a PowerPoint slide, but I actually wanna see that you're kind of analyzing the data doing something with it visually to help demonstrate where the biggest opportunities are and where some of the biggest, the bigger discrepancies are in terms of both need and access. Um, so we can go through that more. I actually have uploaded um, a kind of slick template that has a lot of um, um, different slides in there and some different graphics that you can use as you try to work through that as well. But um, I would fully anticipate that I'm probably gonna be having several one-on-one -on -one sessions with you over the course of the next couple of weeks. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me to say I'm really stuck on this calculation and we can set up one of these virtual meetings so that I can pull up, you can pull up your screen and I can kind of work through the, um, the analysis with you. So we almost took up a full hour, but I do want to leave a few minutes for questions. If there's anything that still doesn't after kind of doing this broad overview, if there's anything that, that um, you'd like a refresher on or for me to go over again. I'm good. <laughs> okay, well, honestly, if you have questions, please let me know. Um, don't hesitate to reach out and reach out early. Um, so um, I owe you a couple things on the, on the migration um, as well, but try to get in the data and play with it and set up your pivot tables now. I would hate for you to leave it for another week or two because this is, I think the project template is scheduled to be due on April 30th and that's three weeks out. Um, so that means each week you should really try to try to work through at least two of those tabs on that spreadsheet so you can make sure that you're pacing yourself and getting through everything. So again, fully anticipate you'll be reaching out, but thank you for joining me. And if it's cool with all of you, I'm going to, I've recorded this, so I'm just going to upload it for the rest of the class if you need to come back and look at something. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you all for coming and let me know again if you need any help. Thank you, Dr. Bonzo. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. <laughs>